It's 6.15 in the morning. We're at the base of the elk chair here at the Fernie Alpine Resort. And there are three tents set up waiting for opening day to start right now. Six fifteen, six thirty ish. They all meet at the shop down there, get their sleds together, get all the equipment they need. Now we're gonna come up to the chairlift, and now we gotta get this thing started because there are people camping out down below that need this thing open. So I have Brad showing me around today. Brad, you're the ops or maintenance manager? A little bit of both. Yeah, I do a little bit of both. Uh, but uh, this morning I'm touring Mike around the mountain. It's gonna be a great day. And we're gonna show you guys what it takes to get a mountain up and running. I guess for opening day, essentially. Looks like the stairway to heaven right now. I've always wondered what's up there. I mean, generally you kind of know it has that giant wheel that's gonna pull the cable around, but what else is going on? We finally get to find out. This is a really steep ladder. So we've got all of our tires and geo switches around here. It's the bull wheel over there. Uh, so we're gonna lock ourselves out. So that makes sure that the run won't, won't go while we're up here, basically. So we're just gonna be tilting and pushing back. Then they'll give me a reset and a bell, hopefully. And this is to make sure when the carriers are coming in, nothing's really going wrong. No ice is on them, nothing to bump them out of place. This is what's up above. You obviously have that big bull wheel. This is what's pulling that cable. So when you're on the chairlift coming all the way from the bottom, this is what's doing the brunt of the work. Then once you get into the station, it disconnects the chairlift from that cable and brings it along these wheels all the way around. And this is what slows it down. So it's slow enough for you to get on the chairlift safely. And then once you've gone all the way around, it's going to reconnect you to the big cable at full speed and off you go again. So this machine here is the counterweight. If the chairlift is full of people, it's really heavy and that cable is going to stretch and sink. Well, the counterweight is going to pull it back tight. And then also when you get an emergency stop, you kind of feel the whole chairlift go whoo. That's the counterweight trying to keep up with that sudden stop. And so it's bouncing a bit. So while the maintenance team is doing checks upstairs, making sure everything's running and they're going to get this thing going soon, the lift operations team, they're going to get the maze set up. They're going to groom their uh, landing area here. So it's all polished for when guests arrive. Looking good, especially for opening day. Ashley is a maze expert and she, we, we always like to say she's amazing. Oh. <laughs> I know, see what we did there? I think the maze here is an underrated area of crowd control, especially on opening day, it's going to be busy. So you need to make sure everyone's happy in line, evenly coming together. Every day it should be the same. Or else you'll get confused yeah. regulars. regulars. Consistency. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so what you may not know is that the maze doesn't stay there all season. In fact, every night it gets taken down because they have to groom it. Because as you come in, you slide to a stop. You're pushing snow aside. You're causing little moguls right underneath the railings, and you're getting these big divots where people are standing. So they groom it every night. So every morning it's nice and flat. Why is maintaining the ramp so important? Well, um, it's really good for um, like an easy access into the chairs. Yeah. So if it's like a nice even, you're not trying to like climb uphill or right. go downhill. You're or not, sliding down Yeah, just like it. zipping right through into the head trap. Nobody wants that. Even, not too many ice chunks. You don't want to ruin your skis. It's also really good for the height of the chair basically. So like when it's coming in, it wants to grab you just like right under your kneecaps there. Right. Okay, so you really do have to maintain this because like yeah. you said, if, if you just let the snow level rise, the snow level is too high, that means your feet, it's gonna be hitting you at your ankles yep. when the chairlift comes under and all exactly. that stuff. Exactly, so. yes. So if you get on a ski hill and you don't even notice that anything is difficult at all when you're boarding a chairlift, that's why, it's because Emily's running it <laughs> and it's going really well. And the last step is to fill up the iconic sniffle station, which I hear here at Fernie isn't for a runny nose, but it's for those tears of joy after that sweet, sweet powder. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was first one here. So what time did you get here? I got here yes, yeah, afternoon, maybe 3.30 or so. So I guess once they close the lifts, that's when you can take, yeah, take your spot. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Before that, you're just in people's way. Yeah, for sure. We've got good winter camping gear. Um, I was toasty warm. I was down in my long johns in my tent, or in my sleeping bag, so. It's a unique experience. Everybody should do it. So did the groomers come by and Yeah, uh, 
Yeah, they came by. I don't know what time, but you could kind of hear them for quite a while yeah. this morning. Just And they yeah. just worked their way around you guys? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they get as close to you as you can. Of they, course. They like to scare you, I think. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Once the snow cat comes down and starts rolling the tiller, yeah, yeah, it's time to get up at that point. Any uh, tips for anyone else that wants to try this in the future? Bring a pee jar so you don't have to get out of your tent. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good tip. <laughs> That's the best tip. Well, it's now 8 a.m. The lift just started running. It actually opens at 9 a.m. So we're still an hour away. It's still very dark. The early risers are just arriving on their skis, but they still have to wait behind the crazies who slept overnight. So now that we saw at the bottom what's upstairs and how that counter to weight works, at the top of the mountain, we're gonna go upstairs again because this is where the engine is. Similar. Exactly. So, uh, like you saw, the bottom is where the, uh, the tension on the whole lift is controlled. Yeah. Um, as well as just turning the carriers around, sending them back up here to the drive station. Yeah. And this is where it's run from. This is where it's all driven. So you got the electric motor throwing out a whole bunch of power. It's all goes through the gearbox, reduced to a speed that's controllable. they're electric because you're on a mountain you want to be environmentally sustainable and I always wondered how do they run electric motor so now you can feel good about it well to be honest it's pretty much what I expected a big motor that pulls all these chairs around because there's a lot of weight think about how many chairs there are and they hold four people each no offense but that's a lot of weight okay so we just finished at the engine room at the top of the mountain and I said we need to rip down to the bottom because they're about to open the lift <laughs> the lineup is significantly bigger now, so we have a lot of happy campers. I can assure them I was just at the top and there is good snow up there. So every, I think everyone's going to be really happy. Woo! first chair and in second place is the Grizz the unofficial mascot of Fernie Wow that means I now have to get in the back of that lineup okay we're going our several ways he's got work to do he might sneak in a couple of runs but I'm definitely going skiing so in the meantime thanks very much Brad you bet pleasure to meet you Mike see you on the hill <laughs> all right Woo! doesn't get much better than this 